Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not sure if it's good news or bad news for you this year, but now that we're in the year 2022, it's an election year. And in just 11 short months, it's not good when all of a sudden I already saw a couple of winces. Um, But in 11 short months, we will be asked to choose who will best serve the people of our state, the people of our communities, and the people of our country uh, by these political elections. But here in our epistle reading this morning, we find out about something even more important than a political election, the election and even the predestination or the choosing from beforehand that God has for his people. This choosing, this predestining is for us as Christians, good and great news. Just like God coming to Solomon in a dream was full of good and great news. After all, who was Solomon that God would come to him and say, whatever you ask, I will give it to you. God had not come to David or to Saul this way. God did not come to any kings after him this way. Instead, God simply came to Solomon and said, I have chosen you to do this great and good thing for you. And so this is good news. And Solomon then said, give me a wise and discerning mind and a wise and discerning heart that I may serve this your people. And so that's exactly what Solomon did. With his wise mind and his wise heart, he went on to serve God's people, having been elected and chosen not by the people, but having been chosen by God and having been given this gift of wisdom from God himself. This wisdom is also true of the people that Jesus met with even when he was 12 years old. 12-year-old Jesus, knowing that it was necessary for him to be in the business of his father, did not return with Mary and Joseph to Nazareth, but instead for three days spent his time at the temple teaching the teachers, asking questions, giving answers, and all who heard this wisdom that was not of Solomon but this wisdom that was God's wisdom from Jesus himself, were amazed by him. But that brings us back to us this morning. Why is it important that God has chosen us and that God has predestined us to be adopted as his children and to be his people? Sometimes, when we hear that God has chosen us or predestined us, it starts us thinking down a rabbit trail of questions, thinking, well, okay, God chose me, but what about everybody else? Is this good news, or is this bad news? Or is it, for me, good news, and for everyone else who wasn't chosen, is it bad news? But this news, that God has chosen you from before the foundations of the world, that God has chosen you to shed his blood for you, to forgive you all of your sins, and to call you his very own, this is incredibly good news indeed. It is exactly why the Holy Spirit has come to you, calling you, gathering you together in the church, enlightening you and sanctifying you in the Christian faith, just like he calls and gathers and enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth to give you this good news. You have been chosen and you have been selected and picked to be a child of God. From before the creation of the world, God knew that you were coming. God picked you. And God sent his son into the flesh to suffer for you and to die for you. Because you are so important to God that even before your birth, he picked you, chose you by name, and has called you his own. 
It's not given to you or to me to know the mysteries of God. And there are some questions that we simply don't ask because we can't have answers for them. Those are up to God. But on those days when you begin to wonder or to think, did God choose me? Does God care about me? In the middle of all of the sin and sinfulness of my life, does God still like me? When you begin to wonder in the midst of pandemics and grief, in the middle of things that you cannot control and things that you may not very much like, how is it that you can say God cares for you? Because your God has given you a guarantee. He has sent you the Holy Spirit to declare, believe in the Lord Jesus, the same Lord Jesus who was born in Bethlehem and laid in a manger. The same Lord Jesus who grew up and became strong and stayed behind in Jerusalem to grant his wisdom to the teachers there in the temple. The same Jesus who grew up performing miracles, breaking bread and fish and feeding the hungry, cleansing the lepers, making the lame to walk and the blind to see. The same Jesus who came being betrayed by one of his disciples suffering and dying on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, that Jesus is the one the Holy Spirit calls you to believe in. And on days when you might be tempted to say, this choosing by God seems like it is too good to be true, how do I know for sure that God keeps his promises for me? The Holy Spirit says, In the waters of holy baptism, I was there. When you were united with the death and the resurrection of Jesus, I was there testifying to you this faith that God your Father has chosen for you, that you believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes to you testifying in the body and blood of the Lord's Supper. Here, here is Jesus. Believe these words, believe these gifts that are given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit comes to you testifying as you hear his word, even now saying, believe this truth. You are chosen. You have been chosen in this great and glorious mystery. But when you hear that God has chosen you, Perhaps it makes you want to look over your shoulder and say, Who? Who did he pick? Me? Why would God in all of his glory and in all of his wisdom pick this sinner or you a sinner? Why would God give his very own son to suffer and die for you? That's a big, powerful question. And the truth is, I don't have an answer for it, and neither do you. God doesn't tell us why he picked you other than he loved you. And he has loved you so much that he has picked you and chosen you and predestined you that you would be his own, adopted by his blood to be his dear child. And so, for you, your sin and your sinfulness has been overcome. The troubles and trials of this world have been put to an end because for you, you have all that matters. You have the adoption of sons and daughters of God as those who are picked to be holy and righteous in his name. And in that promise, rejoice and be glad. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.